everyone, this is Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist of MarketGauge.com, coming to you at the close of New York Markets, March 5th, 2024. And a lot of people are going to be asking, is this a top or just a healthy correction? After all, we really didn't have more than a 1% correction in the SPY for quite some time. And today certainly was it, with NASDAQ even doing worse. So let's take a look at a couple of the signs here on the charts. This is the March contract of E-minis. And what you can see is that distinction right up here that uh, they, they often do when we have a, a peak bottom or the potential of a peak top. And in this case, when we do have these reversals, and clearly this is, this fits the description almost perfectly, new high, in this case, new all-time high, uh, but it could also be with a new 60-plus day high with follow through the next uh, day uh, with strong volume. And certainly we saw a lot of li liquidation. So in these type of situations, generally what we do is we'll take the price and we'll figure a normal correction would be about 10%. So 10% of this move right now would be roughly $500 lower, which if you think about that, would put us all the way down if we got that move down to $4,500. So I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I'm just saying that we have a situation here where even if we did half of that and we went to $4,750, let's say, or $4,800, $4,800 would make a lot more sense. It would be an amazing correction, number one, and number two is it would probably be an incredible buy opportunity. So for right now, let's take a look at the short term. What would negate the reversal pattern, of course, would be a move back over today's high, today's high being $5,157.75. With today's closing levels at 50.78, we do have some near-term support. And by the way, it could stop at the 50 and go up. This is not a given that you get a 5 to 10% move. One should just be ready for that. And so the 50-day moving average, you can see, is at 5,040. I think there might be some level of support here uh, right under 5,000 at 49.90. But nonetheless, right now, the only way I would say that perhaps we're not going to get quite the correction, and this was just a one-day event, is if we come back in tomorrow and we open up above 5,100. We open up back above 5,100, then it's possible at least that we'll try to get an attempt to the low of this day, which is 5,132. And of course, then we're looking at that high. So under 5,100, my bias has to be somewhat negative, above more positive. And then the areas of support, like I mentioned, 5040, we get down below there. I would say 5,000 to 4,990 would be your first real level of support. And one of the reasons why I mentioned that this could be just a one day wonder, and so I wouldn't get too upset at this point, is the last time we had the situation, then NVIDIA reported, and of course NVIDIA just killed it, and everything followed in suit. Well, we have a new NVIDIA today. This is CrowdStrike, which I'm showing you because it reported, don't look at this action. This is what it did on the intraday basis look up here with my eyes as I'm speaking to you, it is now up $34, almost 11% trading at 347.33, which means that it's making new all-time highs, which means it'll be interesting day tomorrow. So keep an eye on those levels I told you about SPY. So let's move on to oil because oil is such a huge factor in what's going on right now. Um, it got above that $80 a barrel but not on a closing basis. And remember, it has to close there. If we look back at this day right here, the close was at 79.97. And even though we took it out the next day, we obviously closed lower. And then here is today. So this doesn't mean that this has failed by any means, but what it does mean right now is that the cut of OPEC is not enough really to keep this uh, supply small enough and the price high enough to maintain that $80. But of course, I wouldn't get too complacent with that um, because if it can get back over, like even say, let's now 79 coming into tomorrow, that would be give me a bullish bias. Of course, a close over 80, very bullish. And if it cannot get back under 79, then I think you have to look at all of this work that we did around these levels here. If you look left, we have two tops right here. 
and we have the body of the candle here we're close to the bottom of the candle right here so I would say that that would put under 79 which clearly since we close around 78.19 would put us first at around 77.90 77.85 and then of course if we break under 77.50 then we'll be looking at this 50-day moving average test at around 76.79 I'm still longer term friendly this. I still think this is a huge base forming and it's just doing the oil thing, which is chopping around until we get some kind of direction. Now, if we move on. Now, if we move on to natural gas, I actually wrote an article about this. Um, so if you don't read my daily, if you go to marketgauge.com, you could pick it up there or see it on any social media. I'm often giving you trade ideas, so it could be a good supplement to these videos every week. But nonetheless, one of the things I talked about, and I even mentioned when I did a video for y'all last week, was that this needed to break the 50, and then clearly it did, and then now today is the second day above the 50, and even though the slope is slightly negative, that's a confirmation of a phase change to recuperation which means now it's pretty obvious we've talked about these levels before clearly number one is we have to hold that 50-day moving average so you're going to have your major support now at around 185 if it holds 185 and i would think that that would be a decent risk point maybe i'd give it a little bit under 180 but if it holds 185 now it has to clear two dollars it clears two dollars then things start getting interesting if we look back to the december lows that comes in at around 209 that would be the next point and of course if we get through that then we'd have to be looking at where this broke down from which is up at around 225 and so on so 225 209 2 those are the key areas of resistance uh, clearly above the 195 level 190 195 you have to be biased friendly and underneath 190 we have to look at 185 and if that doesn't hold up we're going to look at 180 really don't want to see 180 break or this was just really basically short covering rally well here is gold and i hope you guys felt comfortable with the fact that i mentioned that once it cleared and confirmed over these two moving averages it had a clear over 2050 and then 2060 then we'd be looking at 2080 and all of that seemed to happen in one day but then ultimately it had to take out 2100 and of course it has and now you can see from 2100 at 2150 and change so where are we going to go from here to me this is definitely uh, a good sign uh, for gold, I still think that we can see 22, then 2240, then 2400, et cetera, longer term. But for the near term, let's take a look at a little bit here at some history. So when we made this big peak high that day and closed much lower, the body of this candle in the wick and the body of this candle were aligned. And if you move to the right, you can see it also corresponded with these two candles right here. So that tells me 2115 is your key support. So above 2115, have to have a bullish bias. Below, maybe we would have to see another move down to 2100, possibly 2080. But assuming that we stay above 2115, this high right here was uh, 2171. Now this is at the April contract, um, but and this one only got to 2150. So let's assume that we can see that 2150, which I thought was all time highs. And then once we get through there, then I think it's off she goes. Okay, so that, what I showed you before was the April contract of gold. This is the March contract of silver. And again, we talked about the fact that once this got through that 200 day moving average, 2350, this could possibly pop and it has. Uh, today's high actually was at um, 2420 and it sold off. And so let's take a look at where it closed yesterday. It closed here at 2380. So let's make 2380 our pivotal number. If it gets back over 2380, have a bullish bias under 2380, we may have to test once again that 200 day moving average. If we fail the 200 day moving average, I doubt very much whether we'll go much below 2330, 2320, but that would be the next area to look. And of course, above that 2380 level, Yesterday's high was at um, 2393 and really again of course 24 is going to be really more pivotal and if we can close above 24 then I start think we start looking at some of these levels that we had back here which can bring this all the way up to about 2453.
Let's end with a look at the dollar-yen pair here. We had talked about the massive amount of consolidation in a trading range with the dollar. That dollar, even if you look at it from a strictly futures cash standpoint, it's been trading between really 103 and 104. Breaks under 103, then I think you'll start to see a little different picture in this chart. But for now, Really, we have not done anything beyond this trading range. So mark down this trading range at 150.884 down to 149.232. And that's really with the bottom line. So if the dollar breaks 103, I think you'll start to see this uh, break down under 149, in which case that would also be a lot of trading days it's held it. That would be a pretty significant move and I would definitely be looking at selling the dollar to the yen or buying the yen versus the dollar and that may even trickle to the euro, etc. Of course on the flip side, if we wind up clearing really basically this number right up here which is at 150.50 even though the high is slightly above that at 150.88 that would mean that now all this consolidation has been very bullish for the dollar and then we can start to see the dollar moving back up into these levels here starting with 151.40 and then the high here at 151.87. Okay, that's it for now. Hope this was helpful to you overall. Just remember we're seeing with the market, even a one day wonder, uh, possible we come in higher with the crowd strike uh, like we did with Nvidia. But nonetheless, what we're really seeing and what the real takeaway is here is you gotta watch the dollar to be vulnerable, continue to watch the gold and silver, and of course the oil and natural gas because we could be seeing a rotation into commodities overall. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. You all have a great day.